There's only one week to go until the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, so here are my early team selection thoughts heading into Baku. What is up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of F1 Fantasy Pole Position. It is Friday, September 6th. My name is Yulin, and on today's episode, I'm going to be going over some of my early team selection thoughts for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. I'll have my team one that's at 121 point ish million and then my t3 team which is at like 129 ish million so hopefully you guys fall into either of those buckets and if not they'll just be some good kind of like what can we do here where can we move that kind of sort discussion but at the top of the episode just would love to say uh thanks for all the support uh any likes and subscribes to the youtube channel or the podcast are greatly appreciated and you can follow me on x at f1 unfpl where i will be happy to discuss f1 fantasy even though we have a down weekend that doesn't mean that we can't still discuss our teams and uh all that stuff and also leave me comments in uh this video or any other video that is coming out this week but let's get into it here here is my T1 team, 121.4 million in cost cap here. Right now, I've got Lando, George, Franco, Colapinto, Pierre, Alexander Albon, and then Mercedes and McLaren. And while it's not a bad team, it is a little inflexible. I've just been noticing, uh, kind of playing around with some early team structures going on here. So if your team is in a similar position, Fear not, there are some things that we can do. I've got two free transfers. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you have three free transfers, if you plan on using your wild card, all that fun stuff. But right now, so Lando is kind of the like make weight for any moves that I would want to make. So Mercedes have been looking okay. Uh, Ferrari obviously had a banging weekend in Monza. Uh, we all know that. So to get Ferrari into my team, I would need to take out Lando. And that would leave me 0.6 short of getting Lando. But then I could get any one of these other drivers. I could get Oscar. I could get Charles. All that fun stuff. And there's not a lot of movement that I can do with this squad. Just with kind of two transfers. Like George is the lowest costing asset among the top four teams so he's not really going anywhere and i still believe in him 21 points 13 points a dnf 27 points a dnf 43 points 27 27 so still not bad at all there uh just a couple of a disqualification and a dnf kind of have kind of put his season on the rocks a little bit and he would be a lot higher here but fortunately he fell a little bit there so i was able to afford him so there's this kind of structure here with the double ferrari you could also just roll a transfer if you're not feeling um, Ferrari all that much or Lando all that much. If you're kind of sick of him, like finishing on pole and not doing so hot from there, we will see. Uh, we'll have we've got one week until the Azerbaijan Grand Prix to get all that data from Friday's practice, Saturday's practice, uh, and before qualifying locks around 4 p.m. local time there. Uh, I will be in Azerbaijan for that. I will be there for the qualifying race. So let me know in the comments below if you have any tips for Baku or your first F1 race ever. Uh, yeah, let me know. I would greatly appreciate any tips as I head to my first F1 session ever. So fun stuff there. As for the drivers, yeah, it's like Lando, Charles, Oscar. Those are kind of the three you'd be looking at. I've already got Russell, so I don't really have a huge interest in doubling up with Hamilton or the going like triple Mercedes route. Uh, Sergio's a total no-go. I'm going to get to him in ye uh, green flag, yellow flag, red flag next week. So watch out for that episode as well. And yeah, this is kind of the main look that I would be going for here. The other thing that I was slightly playing around with was if i downgrade george all the way to a certain canadian driver lance stroll who is now a c-tier asset 14.7 million for lance stroll so he will rise in accordance or kind of have his budget increased in accordance with what the c-tier assets is so he really only has to score like half of the average to go up 0 0.5 so if you are desperate for budget uh, at this point in the season you could roll with the canadian and that would put me with enough budget to upgrade mercedes all the way to red bull should they show some pace in baku i'm not 
anticipating that happening. It has been a pretty tumultuous start to the second half of the season for Red Bull. So it's not been looking all that great. 52 points and 40 points in the first two races coming off of the summer break there. But if it was a just like, oh my God, Red Bull is back kind of weekend. I do have that area where I could move to. That would involve me still trusting Checo Perez, which not a fan of at all, to be honest. However, I can get there in two moves should uh, Red Bull be looking strong in Azerbaijan next weekend. And this is kind of not a lot of moves I can make with this team, but there are some strong moves I can flip around between pretty much any of the non-Max drivers at the top of the field. And it could even get a little bit weird with a Lance Stroll kind of Red Bull racing combo. And here's my T3 team here, 128.9 million in the bank with this squad. Quite a hefty budget here. I've even got 4.7 in the cost cap bank over here uh, as I downgraded Franco Colapinto uh, or I took him in last race and it worked out quite well. So for this team, I've got Lando Norris, Lewis Hamilton, Alexander Albon, Nico Hulkenberg, Franco Colapinto with Mercedes and McLaren as my constructors. Two transfers in the bank here. Quite a lot of money to kind of move around. There's a lot that I can do here. Uh, one of the options that I was just thinking about is I could just get out of kind of the bottom feeder business away from like Joe Guan Yu, Valtteri Bottas, and Franco Colapinto as of right now and just leap up to Pierre Gasly. That would get me totally out of there. I'd still have Alexander Albon as the last of the kind of Williams uh, kick sauber assets, but not the worst asset in the world. Had quite a good race there. Uh, but if I want to keep Colapinto in there as the lowest priced uh, asset in the game. I don't mind that either. I'm just short of going from Nico Hulkenberg to Lance Stroll to kind of get a boost in price. The interesting thing here uh, ahead of early team selection, which is happening on Friday, September or September 6th. Yes. Uh, Ollie Behrman is apparently rumored to replace Kevin Magnuson for his one race ban that is coming up in Azerbaijan. However, I think he rose to 15 million in price after his appearance at Saudi Arabia. And it's going to be interesting to see if he will come in at that same price when he's in a Haas instead of a Ferrari. So we have to kind of wait for that. So don't make any early moves. This is an early team selection thoughts video. I'm not locking these transfers in or anything like that. So just a heads up that there will probably be a little bit of a change in uh, F1 fantasy with probably Ollie Behrman coming in i think there's an f2 race that weekend so he will probably be there anyway uh so that will help haas a little bit as well so yeah don't make any early cha uh, any changes because ollie bearman is likely coming in for kevin magnuson if you have him if you have kevin magnuson i'm gonna get that to that in green flag yellow flag red flag uh early next week as well so the two transfers i could use here i've got lando i've got lewis i've got all this money in the bank if Ferrari are looking banging again, I can easily get in whoever I want here for Ferrari uh, on the driver's side. If I want to get out of Mercedes altogether, I can do that as well. Uh, I can go double Ferrari with McLaren, all that kind of stuff still leaves me quite a bit of money in the bank there as well. I could get Charles for probably his last ride as a B tier asset. So that would be a little bit of a handy budget boost to kind of get in there and then just drop back down to like a Lewis or an Oscar, even a Carlos Sainz or a George Russell in the next race in Singapore, uh, in the second part of this doubleheader that they're giving us in F1 Fantasy and F1 again. And that would be two of the more informed drivers here. Italy, Netherlands, very good for Lando. It was Obviously, Italy was not as good as we thought it was going to be on Saturday afternoon. And then Charles coming in here, uh, one of four drivers to score at least 20 points over the last four races. Uh, so he's doing great. Ferrari seems like they're on the rise. I'm not entirely sure if they know why their car is doing so well. We'll see how Baku goes. They've done pretty well here uh, in the recent past with the new regulations. So that'll be interesting to see if that form carries over. Interestingly enough, this race is kind of at a different time than it usually is. Usually it's in the first part of the calendar around like April, May time, but this year it's in September. So we'll see if anything changes with like weather, cooling, all that fun stuff when we do the race preview next week as well. But yeah, 128.9 million in the bank here, quite a lot of money just in the cost cap as well. 
not a huge amount to upgrade. I mean, I could get to Red Bull once again if I if I wanted to do that. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think I should do with this 128.9 million team. Am I missing anything obvious? Uh, should I just stick to what I've got with the Mercedes McLaren kind of lineup? I mean, we'll see come Friday data. But uh, yeah, this is where I'm thinking right now, quite easy to upgrade some of the higher tier assets. I kind of just let these back three assets ride. Unless Ollie Behrman comes in at a ridiculously cheap price and we think he's just going to do quite well uh, in his second appearance in F1 this season. So yeah, it would be Lando, Charles, Ferrari, McLaren, kind of just going with those four top tier assets for this $128.9 million F1 fantasy squad. <laughs> But that is going to do it for today's short and sweet F1 fantasy pole position episode. Just some early team selection thoughts uh, one week out from the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Next week, we've got green flag, yellow flag, red flag coming out on Monday. And then the race preview along with some final team selection thoughts on Wednesday. No live stream next week, but hopefully we'll get back on track with that for the Singapore week, uh, Singapore Grand Prix the following weekend. But like I said at the top of the episode, uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Any support is greatly appreciated. Leave me some comments below what you're thinking. Are my team selection thoughts totally uh, off base? What were, are you guys going to be doing with your team? Uh, and yeah, just how are you feeling heading into the final eight races of the F1 fantasy season? But once again, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And I will talk to you next time.